What's going on, podcast listeners? Here with another awesome interview. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing a good friend of mine, a boss when it comes to advertising, an overall awesome dude, and he just announced that he's having a new baby, which is so exciting. So, if you guys are listening to this, if you don't want to subscribe for me, subscribe for the new baby because this information is going to be very valuable to that new child as they grow up. <laughs> David Schloss is an online entrepreneur who began marketing in 2007 from his college apartment. Over the years, he has helped hundreds of businesses improve their website traffic, customer acquisition, and revenue using social advertising. His business, Convert ROI, enables businesses to succeed by taking complicated social ad plans and seamlessly turning them into easy to follow revenue producing campaigns. He manages over 2.5 million per month in paid advertising via Facebook and Instagram. And he was rated as one of the top experts to watch by Forbes magazine, has been featured on entrepreneur.com, Business Insider, The Huffington Post, and has been interviewed on various podcasts and web shows around the topic of social advertising. So I'm not lying when I tell you that this interview is going to be bomb. He's got a lot of knowledge, not only when it comes to business growth, advertising, but money management and introspection and just a lot of awesome things. So I'm excited to bring on David Schloss. What's going on, man? Yes. This is all for the baby. That's, that, was, <laughs> that was great. This is all for the baby. <laughs> for this interview. They're going to see this interview and be like, oh my gosh, my dad's a genius. Or, oh my God, he's a total tool. But yeah, <laughs> it's all good. I'll take it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So I'm excited to have you on here. Um, I really want, we're going to dig in, of course, uh, to a little bit about the agency side of things. Um, but I want you to, to talk about, um, you know, growth and money management as well. So my first question to you is, you know, one of the biggest problems when running an agency, and I know this from experience is, you know, the constant churn of clients yeah. and having to consistently prospect. What are some things you use to prevent these things from hurting you and your business? Yeah. So a lot of agencies like to take care of other people first before they take care of themselves. And what I mean by that is most agencies aren't really agencies, right? They're teams of like three or less. It's usually just the owner, maybe a partner or co-founders, you know, or a team of guys or, or women. And what they end up doing is they're all about just putting more money back into the business, not realizing that they have to take care of themselves too, right? You go, everyone has bills. Everyone has something they need to take care of, whether it's family or themselves, but they have to take care of something. And so when you're first starting an agency, let's say like for me, when I was first starting out by myself, I found that my capacity was up to about 12 clients before I started going crazy. But at least I could handle 12 clients on my own. So whatever came in, you know, take a chunk of that, put it away, don't touch it. Another chunk takes care of the bills. And the other part of that is left for business growth. And I grew my business primarily off connections. I, I went to tons of events. I would, at the time, not really speak on a lot of podcasts. I would just jump on YouTube shows and things of that nature, just talking about what I do for people. And then I would do account audits, which at the time, not many people would do them, where I'd say, here's what's wrong with your account and here's how we could fix it. And in exchange for either fixing it, you could become a client of mine and we'll just do it for you. Or maybe you can give me some advice on how I can grow my business and we'll just call it an even exchange. And the funny thing is that, you know, I did all these audits for free, but I got tons of great advice from it. I would execute those things and naturally the business would grow anyway. But then, you know, several of those audits over time would turn into clients. So it's like either way, I was going to end up growing uh, just by continually doing the work. Now, agencies, everyone assumes that you could just go out there, walk into a business or run some ads and it's like people are going to want to sign up with you. And it doesn't quite work that way. Because one, you're not established. Two, no one really knows who you are in terms of like personality wise or where you came from and how you got to this point of being an agency owner. And three, it's like, why should I even trust you to begin with? Have you talked about this subject? Do you actually know what you're doing? Do you have case studies? Do you have testimonials? So it's like, if you don't have all three of those things covered and you're starting from scratch, then every dollar you do bring in, whether it's from a referral or it's from someone you've met on the street and it's like, they just need help with their business, if you're not retaining a lot of that money, you're just going to blow through cash very quickly and you're back to square one again and your agency's making zero. 
And so that's why I always mention to people, and I've mentioned this to you a ton, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't take care of other people. And way too many agencies hire too fast. So they bring on five or 10 clients and like, all right, man, we got to hire more people. No, you need to get results with these people first, keep them on board for three to six months. And once you've built consistency, then you hire some people because by then you've stacked some cash in the bank and you can go hire some talent. And so that's where I see a lot of agencies falling apart. It's, it's more retention, communication, and I wouldn't say savings, but uh, money management. So yeah, that's where it all starts. Yeah, I love it. And, and so you have a, a lot of unique approaches to things, not only when it comes to getting clients, because like you said, you don't, uh, up to, to this point, you hadn't um, been on podcasts or been in the media or you know, run ads for yourself. Yeah. You really networked and met people, got referrals, but provided results. And I'm curious, um, for a lot of the people who, you know, who, who are either starting or they're kind of all over the place with who they're choosing to be their clients, mm -hmm. uh, probably why there's consistent churn. What would you say to them? Uh, because you, your unique way of doing things is making sure that the client you're bringing in is someone you know you can provide results for, yep. but also someone who has a proven track record would you say to start in like a, a local niche or, or go out and help other business owners? Like what, what would you say to those people? Most people will start with local because it's a lot easier to start with local right now. You could start running local campaigns for franchises and automatically you'll feel like you have five or 10 clients right off the bat. Right. But most people start with local because they're trying to get their feet wet. They're trying to figure out like, am I great with gyms? Am I great with chiropractors or realtors? I went in the opposite direction. I said, I'm going to work with all online people because that's who I communicate with. That's who I understand. This was way before webinars were even popular. I was running webinar campaigns and case study funnels and all this stuff before Russell Brunson talked about it, before Frank Kern talked about it. Like those guys have been around forever. I remember when they were, you know, newbies in the marketplace and I was running ads on Facebook when business manager, business manager wasn't even around. Ads manager was terrible. Like everything was right hand side. So you can imagine like the people I worked with just simply wanted to diversify their traffic. That's why I didn't go into communication with these people at the time who were prospects saying like Facebook can get you leads. What I would say is we need to diversify your traffic because all you're doing is getting organic traffic from SEO. Maybe they're getting some traffic from YouTube. We need to incorporate some paid because paid traffic is what helps you scale. That's all I would say. And this was way before social advertising was popular. And so I would just go in there talking about traffic diversification. And even now, when people come to me and they're like, oh, I heard you're the guy to talk to about Facebook ads. I'm like, no, you're talking to me about Facebook ads now. I'm going to give you the bigger picture. I help you scale. So even if I don't run your AdWords ads, your Bing ads, your YouTube ads or whatever, I know people who can and I will create an all-star team with you. So that six months from now, you got every traffic source running and I help you go from 3 million a year to 10 million a year and you keep me on board, almost as like a CMO for hire. And that's why our agency is looked at more from the light of being less of a Facebook ads agency and more of just an ad agency because mm -hmm. we give those plans of action. Like you want content plans? Great. I mean, yesterday I sat on a call for 45 minutes just outlining content off everything in my brain never wrote it down. It was just already there, spouted it out. And the client was like, where did you learn all this? Just doing it. I've been doing it for 12 years. So, you know, if you're able to be more of a strategist versus just the ads guy or the ads girl, your clients automatically will validate one that they made a great choice in hiring you, but two, they'll want to keep you longer. And so once again, I diversified myself from the marketplace by not just being a Facebook ads person. At the same time, because I'm knowledgeable about multiple things, I can provide insight there and allow the company to keep growing because the more they grow, the more money they have to keep you. Mm. So, yeah. So I hear providing results, creating an all-star team, not trying to do everything by yourself, yep. choosing a niche of clients to serve. Yep. Uh, you said being more of a strategist than just an, another Facebook marketer, or advertiser, or whatever you want to call yourself. Yeah. What other things would you say help people help agency owners have consistent growth in their business time over time you need to network your butt off like i'm you need to go to events now i'm gonna call out some a couple things so my some people might go but i go to that event well that's that's fine you can go to that event 
There's a difference between going to a 30 person mastermind where everyone in the mastermind is making over a million a year. And maybe you're the one that got in that doesn't make a million a year because you know the owner of the mastermind versus going to funnel hacking. Hmm. Here's why. Funnel hacking has two, 3,000 people who all do the same shit as you. <laughs> okay? Everyone says they do the same thing as you. I build funnels. I run that. No, you don't. You say you do, but you don't. I know real funnel hackers who do conversion rate optimization. They don't just build funnels. They help improve the funnel. They write the copy. They adjust headlines. They adjust little things on the funnel, like orange buttons versus blue buttons. You know, we're talking like real CRO specialists. That's a funnel hacker. Not someone who just builds a funnel and that's it for 5K, okay? Same thing goes with ads people, right? Yes, I run Facebook ads. I run Instagram ads. I know how to run YouTube ads. Now, just because I don't know how to run AdWords or Bing or native ads or anything like that doesn't mean I can't be an ad strategist. But that's the same reason why I say I could get you the all-star team because I have a great network of people who do all those other things. And when we bring all those brains together, it's the Avengers of paid traffic, right? That's essentially what it is. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, how did I meet all these people? I didn't go to funnel hacking. I didn't go to traffic and conversion. I did go to traffic and conversion, but that's not where I met them. I met the all-stars going to private events, going to 30 to 50 person masterminds, 15 person masterminds, or I'd go to small events that are a hundred people or less because it's more intimate. The ones you get to 1100 people, 500 people, 30,000 people, yeah, you're going to meet some people that do exactly what you want them to do so you can incorporate them in your team. But then there's the other part of it where it's like you might have been talking to the C player who's really good at an, at an A presentation. They make themselves look real good, but the data doesn't back it up. So you just got a C player instead of talking to the A player who's probably not even at that event and they're chilling at home waiting for that mastermind that's in two months that they paid 10K to be at. And they're the ones running 5 million a month that you're like, you know what? I probably should be working with that guy. Hmm. And I've met most of my higher end uh, network people through masterminds versus these huge events. And every now and again, I get invited to something that never gets announced. And that's only because of the fact that I met all these people over time. And also every now and again, when I post a case study or I post some really deep insight around the ad, you know, the ad network that I'm focused on, other people see it and they go, hey, we want to invite you to this thing that we're doing. It's only 10 of us. No one really knows that it even exists. And you know, you fly out here and we're going to talk ads and we're going to talk, you know, business growth. That happens all the time. There's tons of masterminds. I'm not even aware of that. I know people are in and they're getting tons of results from whether they're digital or in person. And so there's nothing wrong with going to the big events. Like I said, I go to TNC every year. Funnel hacking is great. It's great for knowledge refresher. And it's also good to just be around friends. But you have a much higher likelihood of meeting those A plus, those, you know, those A players, or even B plus is fine. But if you're just looking for that, that all star, most of the time, they're not going to go to those events every year. They might show up every now and again, but you need to go to something that's more intimate. You know, the fact that I can go buy a beer with someone, eat dinner with them, be in the same location with them 24 hours straight, I get to really learn who they are, what they do, why they do it. And then we probably end up working together. Mm hmm I can attest to that smaller events, more, more intimate events where you get to really learn the people how to create learning, learn more about the people, create meaningful relationships. It's, like you said, a lot more powerful than being just another funnel hacker or another, another guy. Another guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. And, um, I'm going to give a, a quick shout out to, to Sam Hodgett, who is, who is an upcoming guest as well. He was, he, he created a video where he was super frustrated because a bunch of people would just keep going out and kind of just like devaluing themselves saying, I'm a funnel hacker or I'm a Facebook ads guy or, or gal or gal and providing mediocre results, providing mediocre work for the clients that they have. So guys create that all-star team go out, network, create meaningful relationships with people who are going to help you not only learn more about the industry that you're serving, but level up as a person for your clients. It's huge, huge. I love it. So you talk a lot about, you, you talked earlier too, a lot uh, about money management mm -hmm. and, and making sure that you are helping yourself first before you can help others. Will you give some, some tips to, to our listeners 
to to help ensure financial safety in the future because yeah. of the consistent churn and stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to use just really base numbers like a thousand, ten thousand, and stuff like that. So the math is pretty easy here. Okay. So we're going to assume that your margin on your agency per client is about fifty percent. So if you have a thousand dollar a month client, five hundred is gone. We're just going to assume. Why? Well, people buy courses, people buy software, people just buy random stuff all the time. Okay. When I started my agency, my margin was about 75% because that extra 25% only went into research tools and that was it. The rest I pocketed, right? But most people don't do that. They think I need click funnels. I need the CRM. I need Odesk or Upwork, whatever you want to call it these days. I need all this stuff. I need a new site. I need to get, you know, they just start building all this random stuff and now they have 700 a month and monthly recurring stuff they got to pay for, right? But in this case, let's just pretend $1,000 a month per client, 500 is gone. And let's just say you're a solopreneur because if you're a, uh, someone with a partner, you can cut it even further, right? Now you're probably taking home 25% and, you know, both partners will have 25 and 25, right? Now, you're a solopreneur, you sign on 10 people at 1,000 a month, you got 5,000 left over after all is said and done. And let's say your monthly bills are super conservative here. We're not talking about people with families, right? We're talking about people who probably just have either a boyfriend or girlfriend, or maybe they're single and there's nothing else, right? Let's say your bills are 3,000 a month, okay? Now, out of that 5,000, you know you have to eventually cover taxes. And in your state, you need to look up what your taxes are and you need to learn the tax brackets and you need to learn what your average percentage of taxes is going to be from what you earn. So if you have a $5,000 profit, you figure out what that percentage is going to be. I always just say 25%. Even if I'm not paying 25%, I just say 25. Now, if I'm making six figures a year, then I, I automatically assume 35% by default, right? Because guess what? Everyone wants to be in that bracket until you got to pay taxes, right? So <laughs> yes. let's just say 25%. So 25% of the 5,000 you put away, gone. Don't touch it, right? So for math purposes, because I'm not going to do it live and pretend I know math, that's $1,250 gone, okay? So because of that, you're now left with $3,750. Now, when I said you had 3,000 in bills, that was before miscellaneous, aka you know, your groceries. Maybe you want to go to a movie. Maybe you want to buy some shoes. Like we're just talking... After all is said and done, you only got $750 left. Well, if you really want to learn how to manage your money and not go broke, you can make that $750 last you all month. Stop going out to expensive dinners. Stop going out to fast food every week. Make your own food and you save a lot of money. I know that when I was single and also when my fiance and I were first living together, we only spent together a hundred bucks a week on food. You can make it work. There's tons of people that do. You could read books by Dave Ramsey, who's one of the you know, core people when it comes to saving your money, not investing, but saving. And all the examples of people who follow his protocol, like there's people spending 80 bucks a week on groceries with a family of like two kids. You know what I mean? Like there's ways to make this work. So you have 750 left over and let's just pretend you spend 500 on miscellaneous stuff. You got 250 left. That may not seem like a lot. Guess what? Put it away. Don't touch it. Put it away. Because the end goal for me was I need to put at least six months of bills away in savings in case of emergency. So in your situation, and we're not talking about debt, we're just talking about savings in general. In this example, you got 3K a month in bills. You need to put 18K away before I could do anything stupid. And what I mean by that is, before I bring on team members, before I bring on uh, more expensive software, before I bring on anything that is of higher ticket than what I am earning at this moment. So of course, as you bring on more clients or you double your pricing, the margin becomes higher, you save more, maybe you find ways to cut back on your bills. Instead of 150 month on your phone bill, find a way to make it 100, right? Just Recon reconfigure your entire financial situation so you could put more away because the moment you get to that six months of savings, now you got a little more freedom to do some more riskier stuff in your business to grow. And by riskier, I mean hiring talent. Maybe you hire a coach. Maybe you, you know, run some ads, 
all those things. And I followed that protocol to a T. I ate cheap, barely went out. When I did go out, I ate, I ate the cheapest thing, drank the cheapest thing, aka water, right? I would do all the stuff that was cheap, but yet I would still have a good time. I'm not saying that I, I lost my life. I basically just reduced things so I can enjoy myself through interaction versus buying things. Now, once I had six months away, now it became a goal to put away more. Put away more as in, maybe I wanna have 12 months of savings just in case, God forbid, the market crashes or Facebook disappears, right? Then there was the other part of, maybe I'll put some away because I wanna invest in this coaching program or I, I need some money left over for health expenses. Like for in my case, I had a health-related incident. If I didn't have money set aside for that, I would have literally gone broke because medical bills can kill you uh, and literal and, you know, and not in a sense that those bills are expensive, right? So saving versus investing. I know there's tons of people who will say it's always invest, not about the saving. Great. It's investing 10K doesn't do much for a lot of people if you're talking about stocks, real estate, things of that nature, right? When we're talking about long-term investments, especially something like real estate where everyone loves to get into because of net worth preservation and, and growth, those are long-term efforts, six, eight, 10 years longer. And I know all the people in my network who go into that type of space, they didn't start with 10K. They started with 50 or 100, legitimately. And that's when they started to make some real good money. When the, the people who started with 10 or 25, they were flipping. They were flipping until they got to a point where they had 50 or 100 to then do their job and really make some money in real estate. You know, you want to do crypto? Go ahead. Be risky as hell. But don't do that until after you have something put away. You want to do Forex? Great. Not until you have something put away. The point is you got to take care of yourself. And so if you're just looking at like the most baseline investments people have, it's really just hiring a coach or hiring a consultant to help you grow your business, right? It's all about the business. And then even maybe some personal development or self-mastery training so you don't break down when, th when shit hits the fan because that does happen in business too. You know, you get some nasty clients, they, they threaten you or they, you know, they talk crap about you and it might affect your business for a little bit. If you didn't have money put away, could have been real work, could have been bad, could have been much worse. So, you know, put six months away and then start doing some stuff like, put money away for you in case things might happen because none of these businesses are foolproof. Even me doing ads for over 10 years, my business could disappear tomorrow, right? Facebook can go away. Facebook can kick me off and then I got to go do something else, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm all about investing, but if you can't save in case of emergency for yourself, that's just as bad. And so, you know, if you can double your prices, start charging three or 4K or 5K and your margin is still 50%, now you're taking home some good money. Now you're not only taking care of your bills, you're saving quite a bit of money. So it's, it's progressive. That first year is going to be tough. Some people hit home runs the first year. Some don't. Most people don't. It took me seven years before things started to click. And this was before any of this training was out now. If I had all the training that's out now when I first started, I would have made a million in three years. Period. Maybe even sooner. Didn't have it. Didn't exist. So... You know, everything now is a shortcut. So if you think it's tough now, I mean, it's not. It's easy. It's quite easy. You just got to be focused. Whew. Bet you weren't expecting that, especially from David Schloss. Mm -mm. Man. Mm -mm. Man, oh, man. That is, that is so, so valuable, especially for people who are going to pay attention to this episode. Most of them are probably going to be advertisers, agency owners, coaches, consultants. Whatever you're doing, you got to have money to help yourself before you can provide value to your client. All right, we're back with David Schloss. He just dropped some knowledge bombs about growth in your business, about how to prevent churn and loss of revenue and clients, but also how to protect yourself financially for when shit hits the fan. But now we're gonna get to know David a little bit better. David, I got some rapid fire questions for you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and feel free to answer them in one question or go in depth. doesn't matter. Cool. I just want to, to uh, get to know you a little bit better. First one is, what is one non-negotiable habit you implement every single day? I have to meditate every day, at least Love for it. 30 minutes. Get clear. What's the objective? If I meditate and don't have an objective, I don't start my day. Period. Mm -hmm. 
Powerful. What is one book you wish everyone in the world would read? The 50th Law by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. On what do you like to spend your time and money outside of business? Video games and just going out with friends. Go to Top Golf so then I could show people I can hit a ball really far. <laughs> <laughs> just stuff with friends or games, which you know, is still friend oriented anyway. Man, we have that in common for sure. Mm-hmm. What is the most memorable experience you've ever had? Sitting courtside at a Miami Heat game back when my favorite players were playing on the Heat, so Tim Hardaway and Alonzo Mourning. Before LeBron, before Dwayne Wade, we're talking about... LeBron's not your favorite player? No. Well, no. <laughs> no. No. Me, Dwayne Wade, and then it'd be Alonzo Mourning and Tim Hardaway, those three. It's hard to pick one. But the point is I sat courtside with my dad, and it was like, man, these guys are tall. You know, like that type of thing. And, you know, when you're a kid, you know, it was like preteens even. I wasn't, I wasn't even a teenager. So the level of appreciation was so different. I'm like, how am I this young on the court watching these behemoths dunk on each other? Like it was just a, another experience. I have to do that again. That's for sure. Yes, that's awesome. I have yet to do that. So it's, it's worth love it. love to join you. What is the most insightful or actionable event you've ever been to? Hmm. I think my first traffic and conversion when it was still small because it was almost like having a reunion of marketers. This was back when it was small to where it's like the max was like 500 people. And I ran into about a hundred plus people I knew personally. It was this like, it was like having a class reunion. Everyone's together. They're like, Oh my God, I haven't seen you in a year. I haven't seen you in three years. I was already, I was maybe 25, 26 and for perspective, that's, you know, that was five, four or five years ago for most people. And I'm like, okay, I know everyone here. This is insane. And it gave me the opportunity to get deeper and more intimate with these people that I've known for a while, just not to that degree, like I mentioned. And that catapulted my business. I think when I came back from the event, I had something like 15K in recurring deals ready for the moment I got back home. And my business just at that time, it doubled literally overnight. That's what it felt like. So yeah, the first TNC was, was just mind blowing for me at that time. Yeah. TNC is growing so fast. Too Even fast. This year compared to last year, it was just so much bigger. Yep. Yeah. Crazy. So find it, find that small event that that hasn't hit the mainstream yet. Yep. Definitely recommend that. Cool. So David, I appreciate your time. I appreciate all the insight you provided to our listeners I want to give you a chance to share what you got going on, how people can find you, how they can possibly hire you to explode their business. So sure. feel free to, to share that info with them. Yeah, so you can find me at convertroi.com or davidmschloss.com. Uh, basically, all information there is about what it is that I do, how I go about doing it, everything from ads to consulting. If you want strategy plans, all that, you can hit me up directly. My email is on both sites, and you can just connect with me uh, directly, whether it's through Facebook, because there is a chat box there. Or if you want to just email me direct, david at convertroi.com. Uh, basically, right now, just focusing on agency, uh, existing clients, helping them scale and grow. Going to be releasing our more in depth ad training around the Facebook and Instagram platform. For as long as it's around, we're going to keep updating that content. We have a Facebook group, the Facebook Ad Savages, where it's just couple thousand people now just talking about ads and what's going on in the network. So we don't hold anything back in there. Something's going wrong. We say it's going wrong. When things are going amazing, we tell you it's amazing. Like there's nothing uh, held back at all. And um, yeah, those are the core things that we're focused on. The group, the course coming out, got a book coming out hopefully in the fall and then, you know, just growing. So yeah. Love it. We're going to put all those resources in the show notes. You can find them on YouTube, your favorite podcast platforms, our website, lvrg.it, and on our blog. So just search for David Schloss and join his Facebook group, Facebook Ad Savages. It's literally one of the the greatest free training groups I've seen. Checked it out uh, before we hopped on here. It's You guys are providing some heat in there. So yeah, all that stuff will be listed. I have one last question for you, David, Mm -hmm. before we hop off here. What do you see being the number one most important advertising strategy in the next two years? 
well, content ampl- amplification is becoming large in terms of like, everyone knows you got to advertise content, right? Everyone knows that you got to put out images and videos and blog posts and all that. I think it's going to be more consolidated to just video period, you know, whether it's video on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube, like it's all just video for the most part. And so micro content that is amplified across multiple networks, it's nothing new, but people still aren't doing it. Hmm. And so I find that as you start to create more value for the marketplace, even if it's bite size, you don't have to give away the whole farm, you know, the whole kitchen. You're just little, little pieces of nuggets of stuff. Just put it out there, put it on multiple networks. And over time, people will start to trust you more. I, I think that's incredibly useful for any business because whether I'm an advertiser or I become a wealth manager or whatever, if I go into real estate, I'm going to use the same exact strategy. Here's a little bit of, you know, of, of stuff that I've learned in this space. Here's what I know about you know, this industry. Here's what I'm going to apply for my clients. And naturally over time, people will begin to trust me and then I can regrow or continue to grow the business that I'm in. Awesome. 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 Content distribution. You are not the first person to say that that is going to be a, a major player in the upcoming growth of, of businesses. So that is David Schloss, everyone. Thanks again, man, for being on here. Super awesome conversation and an unexpected piece of value you provided there at the end with, with your financial literacy. So I love it, man. Thank you. You got it. No problem. All right, guys, that's David Schloss. My name is Cam Martinez and I hope that listening to him speak about his expertise, help you gain some knowledge and insight today that shows you anything is possible and will help you craft your roadmap to six figures and beyond. Cheers.